Hey, welcome to Service Online. We're excited that you guys are joining us from wherever you are. We're going to start service out with some worship, and we just want to invite you to join us.
drawing closer by grace and all oh, my heart is yours and all fear removed I breathe you in I lean into your love oh, oh, oh your love When I'm lost, when I'm lost, you pursue me, lift my head to see your glory, Lord of all, so beautiful. Here in you, I find shelter, captivated by the splendor of your face, my secret place. I'm wide awake, drawn close, stirred by grace, and all oh, my heart is yours. Sing all fear, and all fear removed. I breathe you in, lean into your love. even though we're broken or even though we have our faults we fall short we have sin you love us in such an immense way that Lord to go back to those lyrics we are sinking deep in it overwhelming and I am so thankful for a love like that from my Father in Heaven. Lord, as we continue in this service, help us to stay focused on You. 
or not to just hear the message and let it go in one ear and out the other. But Lord, let the words that are said, let your word penetrate our hearts. Lord, that when we're done watching, when we're done listening, that we're challenged. That we've taken a step closer towards you, that we've grown. Lord, we love you. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Hey, thank you for joining us for worship. And uh, here's Pastor Jim. Well, thank you, worship team, for leading us into God's presence uh, today. And thank you for joining us for one of our online services this weekend. These are really interesting times, aren't they? Someone has said that it's like God gave us a time out and told us to go to our room for three months. And then we were able to come out and some of us acted up. And so God said, okay, some of you go back inside and some of you go play outside. <laughs> well, before we jump into today's message, uh, I want to remind you and invite you to a couple of things. I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. It's right next to 1 and 2 Samuel in the Old Testament. I want to also encourage you to pull out your phones and text somebody today and just encourage them. Let them know you're praying for them. Let them know you're thinking about them. And just reach out to somebody today. You can also go to our website and you can uh, find all kinds of resources. You can find the message notes for today's message. You can find discussion questions for adults and children uh, and things that will help you dive deeper into this message this weekend. You can also find some uh, daily Bible reading plans that we've put together that go along with the message uh, for this weekend. And I just wanna say that if you need prayer, um, I know these are trying times we want to encourage you to text the word prayers to the number 30500. That's the word prayers to 30500. And just let us know how we can pray for you. Our staff will get those and we will, we will take those and, and pray for you and just uh, continue to pray for you throughout the week. Finally, we just want to say thank you for your generosity. You know, because your financial support, the mission and ministries of New Life can continue. Uh, we've been able to feed literally hundreds of families through our food pantry because of your generosity. We've been able to provide resources for parents, students, and children to help them through this difficult season. So I just want to say thank you. And there are three ways that you can give here at New Life. You can go to our website at newlifecc.com uh, or on our church app. You can mail in your offering to the address that you'll see on your screen. Or you can give at one of our live services that are outside on Saturday evenings. Today we're continuing our series called Message from the Heart. And I'm going to get up close and personal with you as we go throughout today. Some of what I'm going to share with you may make you feel a little uncomfortable. Um, I'm going to get painfully practical about some things today. And I'm going to invite you as we begin today to just take a moment and ask God to, to speak to all of us. Um, let, would you pray with me? Father God, we come to you in these uncertain and crazy times. And we ask God that you would just um, encourage us, challenge us. God, fill us with hope. Lord, uh, we need to hear a word from you today. And so we commit ourselves, we commit your word, we commit this time to you, God. And we thank you for how you're going to use it. In your name, Jesus. Amen. These are dangerous times that, to be living in. They're dangerous because of the coronavirus. Dangerous for some of our law enforcement officers. They're dangerous in some of our cities. But that's not what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about the danger to your heart and soul. You know, there's the disease of covid and then there's the dis-ease of COVID. And for a lot of us, we're experiencing that dis-ease. We're fearful we might get the disease, but we don't really kind of think about the dis-ease that's going on inside of us. For some of us, it's the pace of life. You know, for some of us, things have not slowed down. 
Because of the adjustments in our work schedule, we find ourselves needing to be available 24-7, uh, getting texts all, all, all hours of the day and night. For others of us, it's the pressures of life, the anxiety of maybe having aging parents who you are concerned might get the virus. Or if you have young children, how are they gonna manage the work, your work schedule and their school schedule? For others of us, it's the programs of life. We've had to figure out a lot of technology on the fly. What will distance learning look like? How do you figure out Zoom and Google Classrooms? We're tied to technology. If you're watching today and you're under 30 years old, you've never been a, there's never been a time in your life where you have not been connected and, and, and instantly accessible. There's actually a dynamic amongst young people that if you text somebody and they don't text you back right away within a short period of time, that's an insult. They, they must not really like me. But even more dangerous are some of these statistics. According to Market Watch, alcohol sales have increased 42.5% over a year ago. The Center for Domestic Violence says that in February, they averaged 45 visits a day to their website. And in April, they averaged 145 visits a day. Weight Watchers surveyed their clients, and they discovered that the average person has gained 16 pounds since the lockdown occurred. <laughs> the quarantine 16. And even more tragic, according to Insider.com, viewing pornography has increased 25%. Friends, there's a stealth virus that is not just the COVID virus that's threatening our health. It really has three strands to it. It has fear, anxiety, and discouragement. I call it the fad virus. During the 16th century, when the bubonic plague was ravaging Europe, Martin Luther wrote these words. He said, we are experiencing the unimaginable work of Satan, where he is striking fear in people, and not just the ordinary person, but even in God's people. Can you relate to that? So what do we do? How can we keep hope from slowly leaking out of our lives? What can we do to protect ourselves from discouragement? When Pastor Dave approached the staff and he asked us to share a message about what God has been teaching us during this time, I was doing a study of all the people in the Bible who spent time in the wilderness, in the desert, in seasons of dryness, of isolation and uncertainty. One individual who ended up in the desert I call the desert of discouragement was a man named Elijah. We can learn one important lesson from Elijah's life. Pay attention to your heart. Pay attention to your heart. Because the bottom line is this, if we don't pay attention to our heart and soul during this season, we'll end up paying a lot more down the road. Let me say that again. If we don't pay attention to our heart and soul during this season, we're gonna pay a lot more down the road. How I treat my heart is how I will end up treating everyone else. Solomon said this in Proverbs 4, verse 23, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. Guard your heart. Elijah, like many of us, was somebody who did not pay attention to what was going on internally and he ended up burning out. He got to a place where he actually said to God, God, I don't think I can take this anymore. In 1 Kings chapter 19, we learn how he was able to recover from this, this virus of fear, anxiety, and discouragement. And as God begins to give him a recovery plan. And there's some things that we can learn from his life that can help us when we go through the desert of discouragement. Let me set the stage for you. In chapter 18, we learn that Elijah has just won a tremendous victory. Have you ever planned something, a big event, maybe a wedding or an anniversary celebration or a big birthday party, and then afterwards you just feel this emptiness and void? That's what was going on with Elijah right now. Those who mountain climb tell, us, tell me that the, the time when most accidents occur are on the descent. 
after the adrenaline's worn off, after they made it to the mountaintop, and they start making their way down, fatigue sets in, and they become careless, and they can easily harm themselves. Elijah was in that position. In chapter 18, he had just went up against the, the 450 prophets of Baal and won a contest. They were each to call upon their gods to ignite a sacrifice that was placed on the altar. The prophets of Baal won the coin toss and they elected to go first and so they started praying to their God that the God would come down and ignite that, that sacrifice. They prayed and they prayed and they prayed. For six hours they prayed, they cried out to the, the God of Baal. Elijah was so frustrated with them he began uh, ridiculing him and saying, why don't, you, why don't you pray a little louder or maybe your God's on vacation or, or maybe he's using the bathroom, maybe he can't hear you. Well, finally, Elijah steps up and he has them drench the sacrifice three times and then he calls upon his God. And in chapter 18, verse 38, we learn this, immediately the fire of the Lord came down and consumed the sacrifice. Elijah's on a roll. He might be thinking that he's gonna be on all the talk shows in Israel after this. Verse 46 of chapter 18 tells us that, that Elijah ran ahead and outran uh, the, the chariot of Ahab. You see, Elijah was a sprinter, but he didn't realize that life is a marathon. You know what I've, I've noticed about my life? I've noticed this, there's a hardness that sets in when I'm in a hurry. When I'm just trying to get from the next thing to the next thing to the next thing, there's a hardness that sets into my heart when I hurry. I don't know if Elijah thought he was gonna be a rock star in Israel after this great victory. I don't know if he thought the king and queen would eventually repent and turn to God. I don't know if he thought that surely this would be what turns things around. This is what would cause the nation to come to its knees. But like many of us who've experienced unfulfilled expectations and his unattended heart, he crashes and burns. In chapter 19, verse two, the queen sends out a message and she puts a contract on Elijah's life. And she says, the gods, let the gods kill me if by tomorrow at this time you are not put to death. Now we know this is a lie because Elijah had just defeated all the false prophets the day before. But it doesn't matter. By now, Elijah is so infected with the fad virus, fear, anxiety, and discouragement that verse three tells us he was afraid and he fled for his life. He flees into the desert. It says he sits down under a broom tree and he says, God, I can't take it anymore. Maybe you're feeling like Elijah right now. Maybe this week has been a horrendous week for you or this month or these past few months. Maybe you have one of these in your hand and you're about ready to throw it in. Maybe you're about ready to throw it in in your marriage or maybe you're about ready to throw it in with your family or at your workplace. Well, if you have thoughts like that, I wanna encourage you because there's some hope for you in this passage. Um, Eli God gives Elijah a recovery plan, a way out of the desert of discouragement. And I want us to notice some things that he does to Elijah and for Elijah that can help each of us if we'll grab hold of them. The first thing he does in verse five to help him begin to recover from discouragement is he has him get some rest. He literally takes a nap. Verse six, then he wakes him up and he feeds him some angel food cake. And then verse seven, it says that he walks for 40 days to a mountain called Mount Sinai, the same mountain where God revealed himself to Moses. So how do you get through the desert of discouragement? Would you write this down for the first one? Discouragement lifts when I pay attention to my physical condition. When I pay attention to my physical condition. The great coach Vince Lombardi said that fatigue makes cowards of us all. I think it makes cranks of us all too. <laughs> For some of us, the most sacred thing we could do right now is to take a nap. Not right now, not right at this moment, but to get some rest. So let me ask you, are you resting well? 
Are you able to calm your brain down during times like this and just be still and know that he is God? Not only did he sleep and rest and and get his rest, but he also ate well. And so the second question I would ask you is, are you eating healthy? (laughs) I've been trying to physically distance from the refrigerator these days, but it's hard, isn't it? And you know, when I eat junk food, I feel like junk. You know, when you eat tons of sugar, you experience what? The sugar what? The sugar blues. Maybe for some of us, eating healthy means cutting back on the crumble cookies. Or maybe it means locking the doors to the cupboards to avoid those late night comfort food. Or maybe it means increasing your water intake. I don't know what it means, but the question that I'm asking you is this, is what is your body saying to you right now? The third question I would ask is, Elijah had to walk. He walked for 40 days, and so are you getting some exercise? Experts tell us that just 15 to 20 minute walk each day can help significantly lift discouragement. John Eldridge says this, he said a a survey was done and they discovered this, that most Americans spend 93% of their time indoors. Maybe we need to get outside for a bit, walk around. You know, since uh, COVID has happened, this, there's a new phenomenon that's called Zoom fatigue. <laughs> Zoom fatigue is when you're on Zoom for so long, your, your eyes begin to blur and your mind begins to wander and you're, you're like mush afterwards. Maybe you need to take a walk between Zoom meetings. Or maybe at your lunch hour, you need to take a walk. Discouragement lifts when I pay attention to my physical condition. And then in verse nine, after walking for 40 days, Elijah ends up in a cave. And in verse 10, God comes to Elijah and he says, Elijah, what are you doing here? And Elijah said, I I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars and killed every one of your prophets. I alone am left and now they're trying to kill me too. You know what I've discovered about discouragement? Is it leads to distorted thinking. And so the second thing we need to do is not only pay attention to our physical condition, but would you write this down? Discouragement lifts when I pay attention to my emotional condition. My emotional condition. Elijah pours out his fears, he pours out his frustrations to God. He lets it all out. You know what I've learned about God? I've learned this. I've learned that God can handle your complaints. Did you know that about one-third of the psalms are what are called lament psalms? Lament psalms are where the writer of the psalm is simply pouring their heart, their complaint, saying, God, how long? God, where are you? God, how, wh- why is this happening in my life? And Elijah expresses his emotions to the one who created him. You know, there's nothing you can say to God that will shock him or surprise him. Psalm 139 says, God knows our thoughts before we even say them or think them. Personally, I have not always paid attention to my emotional condition. About a year and a half ago, I went through a time of burnout. By my own choosing, I went uh, multiple weeks without a day off. Something was going on with one of my kids and I was carrying the weight of it. And the way I worked out my anxiety was to work more and work harder. I wasn't listening to my body, I wasn't sleeping well, I wasn't eating well. I didn't feel like exercising. My back went out. I was depleted, frustrated, and angry, and I wasn't a pleasant person to be around. Other than that, everything was fine. But the longer I went, the more I went down, 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 doobie, doobie, down, down, down. And it was during that time that I realized I needed to get healthy emotionally that there were a lot of hurts that had happened in my childhood and a lot of hurts that happened along the way that I never grieved, I just stuffed them down. And so I decided to join a Celebrate Recovery step study at another church. And through that time I was able to be honest with God, I was able to be honest with myself and a group of men. And it was an emotional healing for me. 
And God taught me through that season that one of the most important things I need to do is to pay attention to my heart. If we don't pay attention to what's going on inside of us, we'll pay a whole lot more down the road. Maybe for you it means seeing a counselor or calling a safe friend or being honest with somebody and saying, would you pray with me and pray for me? I wanna give you a little assignment to do. The assignment is this. I wanna, I wanna encourage you sometime today or sometime before this weekend is over to make a list. Just sit down and make a list that doesn't have to be linear. It can be a, a map or whatever of all the anxious thoughts or discouraging thoughts you're feeling right now. Just, just do a brain dump. Just get them out. Get them on paper. Once you've done that, then I want you to go back and alongside of each one of those anxious or fearful or discouraging thoughts, I want to encourage you to write a truth about God. Something that God says about you or about the situation or about that thought. Recently, God gave me this verse in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 3. I love it, I, I, it just kind of jumped off the page at me. It says this, and I will give you treasures hidden in the darkness, secret riches. I will do this so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, the one who calls you by name. God wants to give you and me some hidden treasures in the darkness. Verse 11, God tells Elijah to go and stand on the mountain. And he goes out and he, uh, from that cave and he stands on the mountain and God causes earth, wind, and fire to pass before Elijah. But he wasn't in any of those. Finally, it says there was a gentle whisper and God spoke deeply into Elijah's life. Would you write this down for the third thing? Discouragement lifts, not just when I pay attention to my physical condition and my emotional condition, but thirdly, it lifts when I pay attention to my spiritual condition. You know, sometimes we confuse the activity of God with the identity of God. Sometimes we want God to do something in our lives when God says, I want to be someone in your life. God says, I'm not in the big and the bold, I'm I'm in the whisper. You know what I've discovered about a whisper? You gotta lean in close and you gotta listen in order to hear. You have to be still in order to hear that whisper. What happens when we get still before God and we listen for his whisper into our lives? We're able to reframe hope. We move from hoping in the activity of God to hoping in the person of God. And one of the best ways to hear God's voice is through his word. And we have some great reading plans uh, on our website that you can go to that will help guide you. If you're not sure where to get started in God's word, just take the book of Proverbs and start reading through the book of Proverbs. But friends, it is so important that during this time to be continually renewing your mind with God's word, God's truth about who you are and about what he says about you. Because would you write this down? Here's what I've discovered. Whatever you feed grows. Whatever you feed grows. If you feed your fears, they're gonna grow. If you feed your faith, it will grow. Recently, I I had to confess something to my wife. Uh, I had to admit to Elizabeth that my hearing was starting to go. You don't know how humbling that is for a man to admit to his wife that he can't hear very well. And I said to her, uh, babe, unless I'm in the same room, looking in your direction, and there's no fan going, and there's no water running, I can't hear you. (laughs) I found myself leaning in and listening a little closer to what she has to say. And you know, I've discovered the truth, that same thing about God. It's hard to hear God's voice in this world when we're listening to all these other voices coming at us. It's hard to hear his voice when we're not looking in the same direction that he is. It's hard to hear his voice when we're not leaning in and listening. But when you do, you'll hear a whisper. You'll hear God say, I love you. I'm for you. I've got this. You know, one of the best ways we can hear God's voice is through worship. 
And I've asked the worship team to come and lead us in a worship song. You may wanna sing during this song, you may wanna just listen. But what I wanna encourage you to do as the worship team leads us is I wanna encourage you to listen for God's voice speaking to you. Let's worship together. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Cause I am found. I am yours, I am loved, I'm made pure, I have life, I can breathe, I am healed, I am free. my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true, cause I am found, I am Discouragement lifts when I pay attention to my physical condition. It lifts when I pay attention to my emotional condition, to my spiritual condition, when I listen for the whisper of God. Would you write this down for the final point? Discouragement lifts when I pay attention to my relational condition. It's interesting that after all of this, God tells Elijah, it's time to get back in the game. I have some new opportunities for you. I want you to go and I want you to anoint three different people. And by the way, Elijah, you're gonna find out you're not alone as you do this. You're gonna find out that there are literally 7,000 prophets that have not bowed the knee to Baal. It's time to get back in the game. 
I believe that during this pandemic that God's gonna provide new opportunities for us. New opportunities to serve people, to bless people by sharing with them. New opportunities uh, financially, vocationally, personally. I think that God's gonna give you and me some new opportunities coming out of this COVID season. God instructs Elijah to go and find this young man named Elisha and start mentoring him. Start pouring into his life. Friends, you and I were not meant to go through life on our own. We need each other. You and I were designed and created for community. If there's one thing you've heard me say, and if there's one thing I could just impress upon you, it's that you need to find a group of people, a a community of believers that can love you and support you and pray for you and celebrate with you. You might hear this message today and you might say, Jim, this all sounds great, but I've tried that. I think I'm just gonna do it my way and see what happens. And you can do that. But let me ask you this. As Dr. Phil would say, how's that that working for you? You see, you can either live in fear or you can fear God. Not in the sense of being afraid of him, but when I say fear God, I mean this. Facing everything with assurance and reliance. Facing everything with assurance and reliance. You know, centuries later, Jesus would give us this invitation. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, the message version says this, are you tired, worn out, burn out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything Uh, heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Some of you listening to this message might be at the end of your rope today. But can I say this? When you're at the end of yourself, that's where you'll find God. When you realize you can't do it on your own, you don't have the strength, is where God begins to work. And so will you make the choice today to pay attention to what's going on in your heart? Will you pay attention to your physical condition? Will you treat the gift that God's given you in your body well and and, and listen to what it says? Will you pay attention to your emotional condition? Will you pay attention to your spiritual condition? And will you pay attention to the relationships in your life? I think if we do that, like Elijah, we'll begin to see God leading us out of the desert of discouragement And we'll find our hope is in him alone. Would you pray with me as we close? Maybe you're hearing this message today and you're saying, Jim, Elijah's story sounds a lot like my story. I I don't know if I can keep going. Can I encourage your friend to let God, let Jesus take control of your life? Would you let him give you the strength that you don't have in and of yourself? You know, the Bible says this. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Maybe you're listening to this message and you realize that the the missing piece in your life, the missing part that's going on inside is a relationship with Jesus Christ. If that's the case, I want to just lead you in a short prayer And I want to encourage you to invite Jesus to come into your life and take control. Would you pray this with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Lord, you know how hard it's been. I ask you to take control of my life. Thank you for dying for me. I want to make you the leader of my life. Jesus, please wash me clean. I choose to follow you. Maybe you've already made that decision, but fear, anxiety, and discouragement have found its way into your heart these days. Would you just ask God today to give you a fresh infusion of of his hope? Lord, 
I pray that you would use your word to encourage us, to challenge us, to cause us to think, and to cause us to pay attention to our heart. Father, I thank you for your love, your grace, your forgiveness, your hope. And as Paul prayed in Romans chapter 15, verse 13, I pray this for New Life Christian Center. I pray this, that the God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray this in your amazing name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Jim, for uh, teaching and sharing with us uh, this weekend. As you know, this is uh, Jim and Liz, uh, their last weekend with us mm -hmm. as Jim has answered the call to uh, take the lead pastor role at Grace uh, Community Christian Church in series. And uh, it's bittersweet because we love you, man, and you have done so much and brought so much to our church family, but we're excited about where God is taking you. Mm -hmm. Well, Dave, I'm so thankful for all the opportunities you gave, gave me while I was here and all the great people I got to serve with and, you know, you and the staff, the pastoral staff, um, just all the, the great volunteers um, and all the people will, you know, be forever in our hearts. And so thank you so much for the support and the prayers and the encouragement you've given us. Well, we will be continuing to pray for you, uh, you. Through, this, through this time. Would you pray with me? Father, we are so grateful that uh, you are good and you are gracious and you are kind. And you also are at work in purposes and in plans and ways that, uh, Lord, we're, we're sometimes just catching up to you. And Lord, we're, we're so thankful, Lord, for Jim and Liz and their family and how much they've impacted uh, this church family. Yeah, we are so grateful for them. But we're excited, God, for what you have next and what you're doing through Jim and Liz and through Grace Church. And so we pray, Lord, for your blessings over them. We pray for your provision and your care. And Lord, I pray that there would be uh, true renewal and revival that takes place in series as Jim takes this, uh, this new step. So God, uh, I just pray that you would go with them, surround them, care for them. Uh, Lord, we know uh, how much we love them, and yet your love is even greater. And so we rest in that today, and we thank you, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, again, thank you, Jim, for you. all that you have brought. We're praying for you. We're excited about what God has in store. Thank and thanks for joining us this weekend for our online service. And uh, as we kind of finish every week, I know I like to say, be blessed and be a blessing.